Hey guys, back with another video for you, and today I'm going to be talking about short and long term fuel trims as well as oxygen sensors and uh, how to diagnose things based on the numbers you're seeing. So, before you start, you want to make sure you are um, fully warmed up and you're in closed loop. You can see the CL right there is for closed loop. When the engine's warming up, you'll be in what's called open loop, and uh, the engine control module doesn't listen to any of the sensors, so you won't get accurate readings. So you want to make sure you're fully warmed up and in closed loop. That way the engine control module is uh, listening to all of those sensors, and then it changes the uh, fuel injector pulse width to change the air to fuel ratio. So again, you won't get accurate readings, so make sure that you're fully warmed up and in closed loop. So starting out, we'll jump right into short and long-term fuel trims. Short-term fuel trims get updated a few times every second. Long-term is more of an average and over a longer period of time. So with these numbers, you have positive and negative fuel trims. And um, positive means that it's adding fuel because it sees a lean condition. Negative fuel trims is taking fuel away because it sees a rich condition. So you want these numbers to be as close as possible to 0%, but um, they can go all the way as high to 10% positive or negative before you need to start worrying. And 10 is where it starts getting a little too high, but um, you can see our long-term fuel trim right there is at 6 uh, negative 6.2%, you know, that's fine for it just idling here. And our short term is only three. So that's what you kind of want to see, especially just idling. But again, it can go all the way, you know, to 10%. Once you're over that 10%, then, uh, you know, you have to start looking into it and you know, see what kind of issues you have going on. But you can actually combine these uh, readings together, the oxygen sensors and the short-term fuel trims to try to figure out or have a better understanding of what's going on and where to look. So again, you want that to be as close to zero, but not over 10% positive or negative. So with your oxygen sensors, you can see we are at 0 0.42 volts. So you have lean and rich conditions with these as well. So 0 0.2 would be considered a lean condition. 0 0.9 would be considered the high of a rich condition. So these numbers will fluctuate a lot unless your um, oxygen sensors aren't really uh, reading correctly. This one seems to be stuck a bit. It's not fluctuating like it should be. But um, we could still get a decent understanding of um, you know what's going on just for this example so what I was talking about with combining these numbers uh, to try to figure out what's going on you have um, your short-term fuel trims you'll be looking at it for this example so if we give the engine some rpm we increase that rpm we're gonna see either a rich or lean condition being indicated from the oxygen sensor so for example, if the oxygen sensor went up to, say, 0 0.7 or 0 0.9 volts, then um, we should be able to look at our fuel trims, our uh, short-term fuel trims, and if it's at that 0 0.7, 0 0.9 for the oxygen sensor, a short-term fuel trim should go negative because it's seeing, you know, that that oxygen sensor is reading a rich condition, so it's going to be trying to uh, you know go negative and pull fuel out so and uh, the the opposite way would be you know if the oxygen sensor started reading 0.2 volts then the short-term fuel trim you should see it go positive because it sees a lean condition so it's going to start trying to add fuel so you can kind of like combine these um, readings to help you even further so I'm gonna give the engine a nice little rev here and again, the oxygen sensor on this car is a bit stuck right now. Um, this is the sensor after the cat. I only pulled up, you know, a few numbers just for the examples. But this is a four cylinder, so we only have one bank. We only have one sensor after the cat. So um, we're gonna give it a rev and look at the oxygen sensor versus the short term fuel trim. So here, let's do that right now. Bring the RPMs up just a little bit. And you can see we're still at 0 0.4 volts. So that would be more on the lean side. Not horrible, but more on the lean side. And you can see the fuel trim is staying 
at a positive number. Now I'm going to give it a nice little rev here. And we can see it went positive right away. It went all the way to 7, right where it is now. And um, that means, you know, it's adding that fuel because it's seen, you know, a lean condition. We start raising the um, RPMs up. It needs more fuel. So that oxygen sensor is, again, pretty much just staying there. But um, you can actually see the short-term fuel trim doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It raised up, stayed positive, let you know it's adding fuel because it sees that, you know, lean condition. So if your numbers don't look like this, again, that oxygen sensor should be fluctuating a lot more. It's not horrible, but it should be, you know, fluctuating a little bit more. But uh, if your numbers are, you know, 15, 20% on your short-term fuel trims or your long-term fuel trims, then you know you definitely have an issue. I always start out looking for exhaust leaks and vacuum leaks because those are the two biggest causes of elevated fuel trims. So especially, you know, with the oxygen sensor, if you have, you know, an exhaust leak, it's definitely going to throw off your oxygen sensor readings. So I always start there. Um, I always look at the air filter. If the air filter is clogged up, um, you know, that can throw your numbers off. Mass airflow sensor, if your air filter was dirty, chances are, you know, your mass airflow sensor was getting dirty. And, um, you know, that'll definitely throw your numbers off. So I always start with the more simple things. And then, you know, if you still can't find things, you can do, you know, a little bit more in depth. And, you know, maybe you have clogged injectors or you know bad fuel pressure it could be a million different things but this can give you a better understanding of where to look so um you really want to pay attention to that long-term fuel trim as well though because if your long-term fuel trim is really really high and it's pretty much just staying there again that was your long term is more of an average and an overall and exactly that over a longer period of time so if it's just staying at, you know, 25% or something, then you know you really need to look. So that, that's how um, I go about, you know, looking at things just to give you a little bit better of an understanding. You know, I made a few videos a couple years ago, and it was decent, but, you know, it was out of focus, and I was rushing, and, you know, I can go more into depth with this, but I kind of wanted to just refresh that video because, um, you know, again, I was kind of rushing my, I was recording on a tablet. It was just horrible. So if you have any questions, write them down in the comments. I'll definitely get back to you. And um, I appreciate everybody watching. I know I've been gone for a while, but I'm going to be making a ton of these videos, a whole bunch of live data videos. I have a uh, base build coming up, you know, big subwoofers. I'm rebuilding an engine and an Eclipse few other things so uh you know if you want to tune into that that'd be great i'm definitely going to keep doing these teaching videos i really enjoy it um next one i'm not a hundred percent sure what i'll uh, be doing it on something live data related but if you have any suggestions or you know you need a better understanding of something write it to me in the comments i'll definitely get back to you and uh, i'll make a video on it for you so um yeah, just let me know, and again, I really appreciate all the support, and I will see you guys next time.